The story of the widow of Nain is so much more compelling than we get in the scriptural account. And it's another one of my favorite stories from the scriptures. And let me tell you why it is. First, there's some things that we need to understand about this story that really give it uh, such a broader interpretation and can help us see how this story applies to every single one of us. Too often with this story, we just pass it off because it's kind of how the scriptures portray it, that Jesus just happened upon this woman whose son has died and they're taking him out basically for as part of the funeral procession. And he happens on them and he raises her son from the dead. But that is missing so much of the story because first of all, Christ was in Capernaum just the day before. And it says that then he left and went to Nain. But do you know that Nain is actually 30 miles from Capernaum and requires a bit of an uphill walk? And I have never, <laughs> I have never walked 30 miles, but that would take a long time. So if Christ arrives there the day after, he would have had to most likely walk all night to get there. So it wasn't just happenstance because Nain, there wasn't really anything else in Nain. It was not a big city. There wouldn't have been any happenings or goings on there. And we don't get that he did anything else while he was in Nain, except for raise this woman's son from the dead. Why does that matter? Part of it is because it wasn't by chance that the savior was there. I don't know whether she had spent the night on her knees crying because her, her circumstances would have been very, very much in dire straits with the death of her son because she was a widow and she couldn't have been, she probably really was middle-aged and her son in his 20s, which meant her husband had died when he, not of old age, <laughs> most likely. And at that time, it was one of the thoughts was that if a man died not in his old age, that the widow it would be punished essentially. So this could have been seen as that, but it also meant that her care and upkeep when her husband passed away went to her son. And this was her only child, her only son, which means with him dead, she had no one. And she lived in a very small village where it probably would have been in very hard financial circumstances and situations situation with her son now dead as well. So she probably was very desperate in this time. And I bet spent time on her knees praying and asking for the Lord's help. And the savior went 30 miles through the night to be there for her and to help her. And I think that this story in ways that we probably have missed illustrates so well the desire of the Savior to help us and that he knows us personally with everything else he had going on in his ministry and all the people around that he took that time to walk 30 miles to name in order to help her. And this story I think touches me so much because it reminds me of something that happened in my life. And this happened over 20 years ago, but it still is very impactful to me and is the foundation for me of my testimony and knowledge that the Savior knows us. He knows you personally and he loves you. And I know that sometimes in this world and all the happenings and goings on, and maybe even sometimes how we teach and talk about the Savior and our Heavenly Father, that we don't feel like they know us personally or we don't have a very personal relationship with them. But I promise the Savior wants that with you. So when I was in my late teens and early 20s, I grew up in the church, had gone my whole life, and kind of reached the point where I thought, eh, what's the point? Been here, done that. And I stopped going to church. Um, and life was life. It was hard. It's hard at times whether you go to church or whether you don't. That doesn't just magically fix things. But I was in a really low point in my life and kind of feeling like, what's the purpose of anything? And I had gone to see a movie and I went by myself to the movie at that time. And I went early, which means I was sitting there for a little while. 
and there was a older gentleman who sat a few seats away from me and he was just friendly and he turned to me and he started to talk to me just very friendly asking me about what was going on telling me about him and his wife and what was going on for them and he just chatted with me the whole time before the movie starts. And I don't know about you, maybe you haven't ever gone to a movie by yourself or more, maybe you're more outgoing than me, but generally speaking, people did not, <laughs> people did not talk to you when you're just sitting there waiting for the movie to start. But this man did. And as the movie started, it was probably only two minutes, three minutes, maybe five at the most into the movie. Hardly anything, you know, even happens five minutes into a movie. And the man got up and left and he didn't actually ever come back. At the end of the movie, I thought to myself, that's, that's really strange. <laughs> you come to a movie and you leave even before it gets into the movie. So it's not as if, you know, there was something questionable and you're like, I'm out of here. He had just gotten up and left. And as I was thinking that, the most overwhelming feeling came over me and the thought came to my mind that that man had been there for me so that I would know that Heavenly Father knew who I was and that he loved me. And that was a turning point for me in my life. And, you know, a lot of things happened after that and it wasn't just some magically perfect thing, but that has sustained me, you know, 20 years later that I still remember that man and that Heavenly Father used someone else to reach out to me to show me that he knew me and that he loved me. And I know, I know without a doubt that Heavenly Father wants that for each of us. He wants us to have that relationship with him and the Savior. And we can, we can ask them to show themselves to us in a sense, to make it known to us, to help us to see that. And I know that they will. Part of this though, that I also wanted to talk about is the, but if not principle. Because I think sometimes when we talk about miracles or wonderful things that happen to us, when you have been in extremely hard times and you prayed what you felt was your very hardest and you prayed your heart out and it didn't feel like the miracle came, that we often feel like, or when we hear these wonderful stories, it's that I wasn't good enough, my faith wasn't strong enough. And I just wanna talk about that and talk about the but if not principle because sometimes it doesn't happen and it doesn't have anything to do with your faith. And that's where it comes in that we trust in the Lord, that for whatever reason, that wasn't the moment or the time for our miracle. And I love thinking about the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they say in Daniel chapter three, verses 17 and 18, when they're in very dire circumstances, they're about to be thrown into a furnace, essentially burned to death, which I can't imagine there's much more painful ways to die. And they say to the king, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. They knew God could, he could. He could deliver us from the burning fir fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. They knew God had power and he does. He has power to do all the miracles and things that we seek. But then they said, but if not, they knew there was that possibility that it wouldn't happen for them for whatever reason. I think of Alma and Amulek as they watched the women and children burn. And Amulek wanted Alma to stretch forth his hand and he said that, that it wasn't the right thing for him to do. Sometimes we don't get our miracle. But I promise that does not mean the Lord does not know you and love you and that there is a reason. And that as you keep focusing and striving and reaching out to him and letting know, him know the things that you need and seeking to have that personal relationship with him. I know he will reach out to you and you will feel his love and you will have experiences that show you the Savior knows you and he loves you.